Creating a laser cut topographical map using Fusion 360. Here we are in Fusion 360. Today we're going to learn how to build your own mountain. This particular mountain is kind of cool. Maybe it's not a real mountain. Maybe it is. There's a lot of mountains out there. So we're going to learn how to make a mountain. And then from that mountain, we will then learn how to generate laser cuttable plans. And then cut it out and build it in real life using the laser cutter and some cardboard. This will create a topographical map that will also be three-dimensional. And will help you learn how topographical maps work. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to create a new design and then under the create menu here on the top left, we're going to choose create form. It says you've entered the sculpt environment. The sculpt environment is really cool in Fusion 360. So if you haven't checked it out, please check it out. It's pretty, it's pretty cool. We're going to go to create plane. Now it doesn't really matter which face, but I like to choose the bottom one. And then we're gonna go. We're gonna go ahead and create this plane where we are using the center um, to create the rectangle. And I'm gonna switch over to a top view, and we'll just use the origin as a center because that looks good. Now we need to decide on the size of our mountain. Of course, we could make it any size that we want. However, I want mine to fit on a desktop, so let's stick it with stick with something small, say like eight inches by eight inches and then hit enter. So there is our plane that we can go ahead and modify to make a mountain. And we can't do a whole lot now. If we clicked modify and clicked a uh, face, we could, you know, make a crease like that, or we can, you know, pull it in like this and, and make something crazy and now we've got a really interesting shape that looks very aerodynamic, doesn't it? However, this isn't what we're going for, and we're going to need more degrees of freedom and ways to create our particular form. So let's undo all that. And what we're going to do here is we're going to add in more lines so that we have areas to manipulate. So we're going to go to Modify and Subdivide. And what are we subdividing? We're going to subdivide this particular face. We see it splits it into four. And you'll notice that it also gives a bit of a curve along the lines here and here. That's okay because it will all work out in the end. So we can just hit enter or click OK to uh, be okay with that subdivision. Now, if you hold down your right mouse button and you move it upwards, you've got all these hotkeys that you can do things with. However, we're going to repeat subdivide. And what are we subdividing? This face, we hit enter and do it again. So we just repeat this process as many times as we want. And you know, that's pretty decent, but I think we're gonna go ahead and do that process again with all of these faces. And we will then figure out how our mountain is going to look. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, we have our mesh that we can go ahead and modify and we're gonna make a really cool mountain, but we, we are trying to do a topographical lesson here. So that means that we want to include some very steep faces, some shallow faces, maybe a valley or two. And so that way we can understand and see what a topographical map actually represents. So let's go ahead and click the modify button, our edit form, where we're going to edit one of the dots and you can either grab a face, you can grab a dot, or you can grab a line and you can do whatever you want. These are called edges, by the way. These are faces and these are vertexes. So let's grab the middle vertex 
and we can change our view the way I'm doing that just holding down the shift key along with the middle mouse button both held down and we can orbit you could also just grab your view cube and move your view cube around or you could use this button right here where we have a, either a constrained orbit that's an orbit we can move it this way and go this way or we could do a free orbit and just do whatever we want and go crazy but all as always with fusion 360 if you get really messed up and you're like hey what's going on here just hit the home button oh hit the home button and it'll bring you right back all right let's go ahead and make our mountain about a nice steep area we're at 50 millimeters and we can go ahead and type in a value let's say I want my mountain to be six inches tall all right I don't know if many mountains look like this it looks more like a physics experiment at this point but let's go ahead and and roll with it we're just gonna keep on modifying the form and see what happens all right that's kind of cool maybe Maybe grab this edge and move this guy up a bit. Well, that's kind of looking more organic. Maybe a Grand Teton thing going on. That's kind of cool. Let's maybe add in another peak over on this side. So we got a nice valley here. It's pretty neat. We'll grab and move this guy maybe a little bit fatter we don't want to overlap you don't want to do anything wild like this because that's not gonna work and well, no mountain really does that so we're not going to do anything like that we're gonna pull it back let's say we got a cool little valley a couple steep valleys maybe over on this side we're getting crazy hit home in the view a little valley here let's pull this guy up that's kind of cool all right so we've got a steep face we've got a couple we got a gradual let's make this more gradual much more gradual slope and pull this face up a bit there that's pretty cool so that could be a mountain maybe it exists somewhere in the universe in fact statistically it must or does it so here's our mountain all right we're going to go ahead and, and click okay we're done editing form and finish form and there's our mountainous region that we're going to be learning how to produce a topographical laser cut out of all right if you don't already have it you should have slicer for fusion 360 that is the replacement to 123d make um, of course the autodesk is getting rid of the 123d products and they are migrating everything over to existing products um, so i already have slicer installed it looks like this if you don't have it you just download it for free um, just google slicer for fusion 360 and you'll find it so let's go ahead and open up slicer and refinement medium we're gonna well selection i want to do this object refinement medium that's perfectly fine for our purposes today we're just doing it out of cardboard no big deal we're gonna hit okay and then it's going to open up slicer so here we go now if you haven't already used slicer you need to make sure that your settings are correct for the type of material that you're going to be using um, and you got different options here a4 a2 paper letter paper legal paper we're not going to do paper we're going to do it out of cardboard because it's going to work out better with a topographical map because the cardboard has a non a non negative or that's that's not correct how about a non thinness it has a thickness to it all right here I have input a custom setting called laser cut cardboard. My laser cut cardboard is five millimeters thick. It is corrugated cardboard. I can just, it's just standard cardboard like you'd find in any box. And it is 24 inches by 16 inches. If you don't have those settings input, you can go here to edit 
and you can add in your own custom. You just hit the little plus button down here, add material, and you can change your units to whatever is easiest for you. And then I've got 24 inch wide, 24 inch long by 16 inch wide cardboard and five millimeters corresponds to 0.197 approximately inches. So we're gonna go ahead and click done. Okay, now everything looks pretty good. Our height is four and a half inches. My width and my length are eight inches. So that's a pretty decent size for my laser cut. It's not gonna be outrageously big. It would fit on a desktop. And so it, it's totally reasonable. Let's see how many layers it's going to produce. So let's go ahead and select a technique. Of course, you can do all sorts of cool techniques. However, the goal for this particular lesson is to produce a topographical map. So we're going to choose stacked slices. And we see here that it slices it up and it looks real cool. We're going to use seven sheets and 34 parts, but I forgot to change this to my laser cut cardboard. So let's go ahead and select that. And we're now into two sheets. Not bad, we can definitely work with that. Um, we have any model issues, unconnected pieces in blue. Well, that's okay. We're just going to glue them anyway, so that's no big deal. We can deal with that. But everything else looks pretty decent. And we got our valley here, and we can see if we're looking down from a top view, how you have each layer of your car cardboard would correspond to the contour lines of a topographical map. And that's really cool because I can see that this part here would be a more flat area and this would be a very steep slope. This would be a gradual slope and indeed it is. So how cool is that? Well, we got a weird, a weird little thing going on down here at this edge, but you know what? We're gonna run with it and there are no mistakes, only happy accidents, of course. Modify form, assembly plans, get plans. Everything looks fine. Everything's good. Our settings are good. Units, thickness, slot offset. Everything looks perfect. All right, let's go ahead and get plans. We have two plans here. Now, I was having a bit of trouble when exporting this as a DXF. For some reason, it's treating it as if it were not a vector, and so when I exported as DXF, all the lines were disconnected, and I had a bunch of little tiny dots, and of course, that is not good if you're trying to do a laser cut. So I was able to fix that by exporting as an EPS. So here we are in EPS. We're just gonna export to the computer, and let's go ahead and save this on the desktop. We can call this, how about Mountain? Maybe we should name our mountain. What would be a cool name for a mountain? Stone Mountain. Is that cool or is that corny? I don't know. Why are we saving as a zip though? That's, that's a good question. Why are we doing it to a zip? EPS. Export to my computer. Save as Stone Mountain. Let's see if it worked. All right, we saved it to the desktop. There it is. I have no idea why it zipped it, but it did. So we'll just go ahead and pull those guys out of there. We don't need this folder anymore. Get out of here, folder. Okay, so we got our two EPS files. And of course, these are Illustrator files. And if you don't have Adobe Illustrator, I'm sure you could use Inkscape. Inkscape is, is fine but I prefer Illustrator. So we're gonna go ahead and open up our first file with an Illustrator because my laser cutter does not like EPS files. It prefers DXF files. They're much more delicious than EPS files. So we need to do a short, uh, quick little conversion. And also we're gonna check our settings to make sure everything looks good before we send it to the laser. All right, let's go ahead and zoom over and zoom out a bit. Everything looks fine. My artboard is a little bit small, but that's okay. It looks good. Okay, let's go ahead and select everything and see what uh, what stroke everything is. 
So we're going to select all. And let's change everything to a one point stroke because that's what my laser cutter prefers. And then we're going to type. Do we have any outlines to create? No. Do we have any groups? Yes. We want to ungroup everything. So now everything is ungrouped. Looking good. All right. Now we're going to go, going to, go to file, export, export as. And we've got Stone Mountain zero. Of course, computers start counting at zero. And we want to save it as a DXF file. We're going to hit export. We don't want to change any of our units because that would totally mess up the final size of our design, which we've already decided when we designed it in Fusion 360. So let's go ahead and click OK. And let's, our, let's go ahead and do this to the next laser cut file. So we've got Stone Mountain 1. So we're going to open that one. Not much. I can maybe use a scrap piece of, uh, of cardboard in order to cut out this guy because there's only three pieces. Not too bad. All right, let's go ahead and select everything. We're going to change it to a one-point font. We're going to choose type. There's no outlines. We're going to ungroup everything. It's ungrouped. File, export. Export as a DXF. Stone Mountain 1 looks good. Export and then hit OK. All right, so now that you have your DXF files, maybe maybe you should try using Slicer to export as a DXF. Maybe you're gonna have better luck than I will, but whatever you do, just make sure that your file format is in a form that your laser cutter prefers, something that is nice. If you don't know how to operate your laser cutter, that is going to be a separate YouTube video. So let's go ahead and jump to the cutting process and then we'll show you some assembly.